is close. Is close. <laughs> he's a Mexican. Yeah, yeah. Ah, Bolivia is close. There's a guy that looks like a Portuguese. I will not tell. Yeah, you, right next to it. But someone here looks very like a Portuguese. I'm not telling who it is. Okay. <laughs> Jump <aside. laughs> This is nice. Okay, so Mario, Hi. welcome to the uh, welcome on the Thai Paris France. Uh, that um, informal uh, talk we launched a month ago already. So um, it's very good to have you uh, with us uh, to discuss about typography together, all together. Uh, it's a very good experience. Laura, she's al already an alumni of. Uh, of, uh, <laughs> it's a guest alumni. She's a guest exactly. alumni. Exactly, guest alumni. <laughs> guest alumni, something like that. Guest alumni, know. guest teacher, guest, guest but, friend. Guest alumni, <laughs> guest alumni is because I did this already, and then this is why I'm an alumni. So, <laughs> you know, or alumni guest or something like this. So. Yeah, alumni guest is much better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so everybody here are uh, people who already uh, did the Thai Paris um, one, one year. Uh, in, so they are completely into Thai design, but also graphic design. And some of them um, ask the question you will have at the end. So okay. does the, yes, so you came in 2017. So. Uh, if my memory is correct, Margot was there, right? Margot, yes. uh, she was in, in 2017. Yes. I, I remember her. Yes. Yeah, you remember her? Wow, good memory oh. from old guy. <laughs> yeah, good memory. Uh, and also, um, um, I, yeah, you were here. Yeah, you were on the class. Yes, sorry for my memory. Uh, Adriana, you were also uh, there in 2017. Wow, yes, time flies. Nice to see you again, Mario. So, uh, so uh, and, you, and, and you forgot me, Jean-François. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, that you are <laughs> men. So I forgot men of the, of the cap. The cap. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Men to be forgotten. Women never. Yeah. That's that's. <laughs> That's a philosophy, yes. Women first, all the time, for the good reason, not for the bad Don't ones. worry, Raphael, he forgot me too, so we're, we're, we're good. Yeah, but you are not a Thai Paris alumni, you are just like, like us, a teacher, instructor, whatever, yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, so we will start, yeah, we can start as you want, uh, but I, I have to do a very short introduction about you. Um, Mario, we know each other since the 90s, right? Yeah. We meet the first happened. time probably in Reading for during yes, 85, yes. I did 97, 97, 97, yeah. look at that. We are born on the same decade in the 60s. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. I'm 50 now. Yes, you are 50, I'm, fi I'm 55. I yes, know, I know. You're much older than me. Yeah, it's yeah. easier to see that. <laughs> so we are probably old as the father of all the people here on the on, on this Zoom, mostly. Yeah. Mo for most of them, we are the, the age of their father. Look at that. Yeah. Oh. Not for everybody, but mostly that's the case. <laughs> you can you can skip that part. You can skip <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so um, um, since the moment we meet, well, we we have a lot of exchange at the time by by email on on the um, yes it was before <laughs> before by email email. by phone and fax by phone by and by fax. fax also yes the <laughs> yes. email so, came uh, one year after maybe yeah 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 yes. regular yes. email yes. Yeah, we have some um, some email discussion because before the chat, we have email uh, group, people by email, uh, type designer joint uh, mailing list, and there was a lot of people discussing that chat, but with email. So it was a, a nice way to exchange about typography and type design, and to have all the all the bad, 
or, or all the bad things about big foundries, about monotype, about these people doing uh, nasty things against type designer. <laughs> It was a way to unite against these bad people. We are still bad <laughs> 20 years they're after worse. that. They're worse now. <laughs> they are worse now. Yes, they are worse. So, yeah. so welcome to be with us. And uh, you can start any time to discuss about your, the first part. You want to speak about a new project you, are, you have on the desk now. So please start. Before I start showing things, I, I always accept this kind of uh, presentations because I don't realize that I will be in front of people. <laughs> but then when it came to, oh, so, uh, but well, I didn't have uh, much time to prepare this and I didn't took it as a real presentation of uh, uh, my work. And I choose to talk about the project that somehow stands a little bit aside of uh, what I usually do and was actually uh, an idea that I had for a long time in my mind. I, I will explain you why. And, but it took quite a little time to, 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 to make it, but it took me a while to think uh, a bit. And it somehow I used the... Uh, um, methods of design that I normally don't do also because I tend for each project to use a different approach. Uh, I don't have like a, a established workflow that, that I take to make my designs. It changes normally from one project to, to the other. So I will share you my screen and I will start to talk about about it and let's see how it goes. Okay, is this, um, should I made it in full screen or you see it, all right, like this. Maybe full screen is better. Oh, but, oh, you're still there, okay. Actually, we, I have uh, three typefaces here, but I will talk to you about the, the one in the middle, it's called Rodi, I will explain you why. And but the other two typefaces, I'm also working on them at the moment. Graza, which is misspelled there, it should be with an S because previously it was with a Z, but I, I haven't got used to the new name yet, so I'm sorry for this, but it's not a problem. So let's move on to Corradi. Um, I'm sure when you see this, uh, you know immediately uh, where it comes from. It's a monoline light version of uh, Arnold Boeckling typeface, one Art Nouveau typeface, very popular from the beginning of the 20th century. And uh, the reason uh, here is the original one and then the, the, the monoline version that I'm working on. Uh, the reason why I designed uh, a typeface, and this might be a chance to tell you that there are many reasons for, for, for me to start a typeface. Either because I feel like I need a certain uh, design to, 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 to the foundry, or uh, if a client uh, asks me, uh, even if I don't work that much on custom projects, I do some here and then, but it's not my main thing. I, I even, I think I prefer to work on typefaces for retail than, than uh, to work on custom fonts. But the reason is a band. Uh, I use it, I still love a lot the Dinosaur Junior, and it was always very intriguing to me why they, they choose such an ugly typeface for their name that didn't, didn't make sense for me but after so many years of, of buying their records, I got used to it. And I always had in my mind, one day I should make something uh, related to this type, but it can't look like this typeface exactly. And I must tell you, before I came into this light version, monolight, I've tried 
six or seven approaches, making it without contrast, less fuzzy, less curvy. And I was never happy with it until this one uh, that quite uh, uh, pleases me. So uh, this is the basic glyphs that uh, represent the font. There is one single glyph that I changed completely uh, from the original and it because I, I, I tried to make it like the original, uh, following the same forms, but it really didn't work. It's the I, uh, E for Italy. I really find it strange when, when you set the word, even, even it is just uh, by, uh, how to say, deduction, you understand that it's an I, but, but it's, it doesn't really look like a, a, an I to me. So how did I make it? So for, I guess for the first time, I have used another font on the background to design my, my own. Uh, so I pick up the original um, Arnold Blocken font and I start by creating straight lines uh, with the points where I, I think they should be. Then uh, I start to create uh, the curves until I'm happy with the shape. This is quite simple, but uh, not as simple as it might look when you start doing it. And then I add uh, weight to the stroke and voila, uh, we add that. So this is pretty much the method that I, I, I use to design this typeface. Before I start uh, like moving on, I, I try different weights, uh, I also check the, the, the overshot, so where the, the, um, the line should stay, so when I apply the weight, it will fit more or less in the measures. So that required a little bit of previous study, but this was pretty much what I have done. Um, but there was a problem spacing, because normally when we are working on, let's say, more conventional typefaces uh, for, oh, for the, for spacing the capitals, we use the H and the H of this uh, uh, type is quite strange and you cannot really balance the other letters by using the H as a, as a measure and using the I doesn't give you uh, space, you don't have a counter, so it becomes quite complicated to space it. So for that, uh, I created a fake, uh, this is, sorry. I created a fake H that I just used it to space uh, the other characters. This is not the real edge of the typeface, but it was my uh, uh, unit of spacing to uh, to space the, the capitals. In, in the lower case, uh, it was okay because the N is quite conventional, so this sort of problem didn't arrive. I'm using the other two typefaces that I'm working on, Parnaso text on the top and Grosa on the bottom here. Okay, this is pretty much what I have done to... to, to... Still, it was a challenge because you have uh, this things, these swashes that go outside the, the normal shape of the letter. So it was quite challenging, but also interesting to, to, to see uh, how, to, how to space uh, a completely uh, different type that I have ever uh, uh, created. As you see for the lower case, oh, somebody's trying to reach me here on the what is called the stack, but it's later, no worry. So this is pretty much uh, how the typeface looks now. The name Corrodi is after a Portuguese Swiss born architect that came to Portugal at the age of 19, as you see here. And he ended up marrying, uh, married with a Portuguese uh, woman and he died here in Portugal in 
1944, and we have about 400, um, 400 buildings that were made by him in, in Portugal. He's not famous, but the buildings that he made or created are quite famous and quite uh, interesting. So uh, now, after that, I decided that I should uh, create also an italic to make the typeface a little a bit more mine, if I would say, at least the italic is uh, somehow an invention of mine because the original typeface doesn't have an italic. And this is pretty much how it looks when we get the figures and with that. And it was interesting for me to see that a completely old fashioned thing can be uh, refreshed. And uh, to me, this looks quite uh, contemporary and quite readable too, which is a bit strange for s such uh, strange forms in, in, in some of the glyphs. Not in the upper case, but even so, I, I think it creates a very interesting texture uh, as, a, as a typeface. In, even in uh, uppercase. So this is more or less the complete, not the complete, but it's what I have uh, so far uh, designed for the upright. I'm, I'm having quite a fun designing some of the characters and I will show you my favorite ones, which are the pilgrim, the uppercase S set, which is a letter that should not exist, but uh, it seems like it, it exists now, so I have designed it. The sterling, the ligature, and it's quite fun to, to have a chance to work on these uh, things aside of the more conventional ones. And as I told you right now, I'm, I'm working on the, on the italic, which, uh, looks more or less like this. I decided to, to, to have real italic shapes in some of the letters, like the A, G, and so on. And some of the letters really required uh, uh, to be changed in order to, to, to work uh, as a, an italic, which has an angle of 16 degrees. And I think we are reaching the end. I have not. I'm just showing you also two examples of the other typefaces that I mentioned. Parnaso text. This is meant for real small size. And because we are seeing it in negative, it looks actually a bit bolder than what it really is. I'm not putting the ligatures here, it's plain text. And this is uh, Graza, which is going to be our next release. And the same effect applies because we are seeing it in negative. It looks actually a bit bolder than what uh, actually it, it is. This typeface is quite conventional and a little bit like many typefaces uh, we see around that, but still is also the typeface that we are using in our website. Uh, it was to me a challenge of trying to make something that would melt Helvetica with Futura without looking like none of those. And somehow I'm happy with the results. It, it, the typeface uh, is very uh, readable and very easy to use. So I'm happy with it. And voila, uh, for the moment, this is, I don't know if the 10 minutes are gone. I, I know that I tend to speak a little bit uh, fast because I don't like people to, to get uh, bored uh, with what I'm saying, but now I, I'm free to, yeah. to answer your nice questions that Jean-Francois already send me. I don't know, Jean-Francois, if you want me to show the, the font file, I can do that, but pretty much uh, you will see what you already saw. Yeah, we can.
Uh, I have just a small question about this this typeface. Uh, you, Which one? You show about uh, the typeface you the presented. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know kids. Yes, Corody. Yes, Corody. Do you plan to do some weight or thing like that, or just light as this one? I think it will remain. I, I tried a lot of, and even with this model, I tried to to make it uh, heavier, and it, it just uh, loses the charm that it has. It's like this. Maybe I will. I will have. A version of this for smaller sizes um, that will be a bit uh, heavier, but okay. somehow it will look like this in the in the size that it will be meant to use. Because yeah. when you start to add weight to this, you need to add contrast, and and suddenly you are near the original. And it loses the charm that I that I found uh, yeah. uh, that okay. it has somehow. Thank you. Um, so um, the question uh, we uh, I sent to you uh, was was asked by uh, different people from Thai Paris. So we will start uh, by the first one. Um, so you know that the old story. You started. Uh, I, I have put that on the chat, and you have already the question. Uh, I will stop sharing. The, 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 yeah, yeah, sorry. please, please. Yes, I will yes. stop sharing so you don't have to see the, uh, that my girlfriend is getting mad on me now. It's not true. But <laughs> uh, you don't have. Okay, stop sharing. All right. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Very okay. yes, yes. yeah. no, nice. So, um, on, on I, on, even I recall when I visited you a um, long time ago in your first studio in Barcelona. In, in, in Lisbon, I think it was in the when it was. I recall to visit at your studio in in the nineties or early to, early two thousand. Yes, before Lisbon, maybe I think. Maybe two thousand. Yeah, maybe two thousand. I don't recall why I was in Lisbon in two thousand, but okay, I was visiting you, yeah. and uh, at the time you show you have shown to me some of your graphic design uh, on especially. Um, a surf magazine, or you were, yes. and you have done also a lot of uh, publication for museum or things like that. Yes. So as a user of people work. So yeah. could you explain a little bit more, or you you switch from this this kind of things to type design? What was the impulse of the change, or the impulse okay. to do uh, to do David Carson things to something yeah. little more classical? Yeah, please explain. Uh, I started designing fonts or manipulating fonts or whatever you want to call it while I was uh, art directing this uh, surf magazine. And all my visual background was really coming from the surf culture or rock pop culture, fanzines and skateboard and all that. That was my visual uh, universe and in first place that was what led me to to try to uh, uh, work on, on on type in the same way that i would work on sound to make music so i have always looked as typefaces as the sound to make uh, graphic design and because i had the chance to test uh, new fonts every month on each magazine, I, I was completely free uh, from the editors to, to do whatever I wanted as a, uh, as a designer. I had this chance of trying a lot of things and I was having fun with that. And it, then I met Jean-Francois, it was very uh, encouraging for me. And, 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 and one day I met one person that unfortunately he was not, he's not, uh, with us anymore, he died a couple of years ago, and he was a typographic typographer, a classic one from the early days, and he had a, a huge uh, library with uh, very interesting books. And one day I phoned him, somebody gave me his phone number, I went to his place, and I, I bought a pack of stuff that I was working on. And he looked at it and he said, 
this does interest me anything and put everything aside. Like, no, he didn't even look at it. It's just, it doesn't interest me anything. And he start pulling books from the shelf and start showing me old Spanish books, uh, the updike printing types, uh, books printed by Dido and all that. And I was, wow, this is, this is what I want. And I, and it, I can't really explain why that, but it, it felt in that moment, no, I want this. Uh, okay, I, I came from punk rock, but I want to be a, a classic musician. I, I felt something like this. And since that day on, I, I, I start to search for books, uh, information, and whatever I could uh, find about the a classic uh, type and that was when I, I, I came aware of the Spanish uh, classic uh, typefaces from the 18th century and also aware that not there wasn't really a serious work being made on that. Uh, Andrew Balius uh, was already working on his Pradel but uh, other than that there wasn't really uh, much work being done on the Spanish stuff. And for, for quite a while, um, I devoted myself uh, to study that. And then it, I'm going to tell you something that is quite personal, but, but it doesn't matter. In that period, there was a year where I had to make three series in a row. I'm okay, it was doing fine, but one of them was very painful and required me because it was a cirurgy on my jaw. Uh, so it required me to stay for six months at home. It was worse than the lockdown, I can, I can assure you. And I could not go out and I, I didn't feel comfortable to meet with people. And it was in this, this exact moment that I, I deeply went into learning type design in the way I could, like buying all the books I could, reading all the books I could, and spending most of the time um, to, uh, to learning how to, how to do type. And slowly by slowly, I began to, to, to lose my interest in graphic design as it is, like I was feeling that I was spending too much energy to try to convince the clients that what I was doing was the most important thing in the world, knowing that this was not true. So it became quite hard to, 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 to sustain that. And, and uh, even I kept the, the design studio for eight years or 10 years maybe. And there was a moment where we were five people working and I had to pay the salary for each one in the end of the month, but there was never enough money to pay my own salary. So that became a bit uh, uncomfortable. Then a little bit early, earlier than all these, uh, I, something happened that, that made me feel that I could be a type designer. I got a, I don't know how, but I got a contract with Adobe to publish one original typeface that they are still selling. <laughs> I don't recommend you to, to go and see it, but you can do it if you want. And it was, it was mind blowing that a company like Adobe wanted a design for me. I had the chance to work with Carol Tombley, the author of uh, uh, Traje and Typeface that, that uh, left the, the career as a type designer. And that was, it was incredible moments. And also in that time, I had the chance to, to change ideas with people like Jean-Francois, John Donner, and other people that would spend their time writing a letter and say me, oh, maybe you should do this, that. And this became very uh, motivating for me to, to, to keep on. Uh, until in 2001 when I launched the uh, Feliciano type. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Uh, I just sent a link to this beautiful typeface you made for other. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but in certain ways. 
you're taking yes. my clothes off without asking. <laughs> no, but your, okay. your most recent paper is it's in certain way similar to this one. I mean, uh, it's yes. crazy. Yeah. It's, true. it's true. It's another take, but it's, it's crazy. Uh, yeah. I, I have a spe specific question because of the early days. You know, all these people, maybe not Laura, she is probably more in the same case as us. Even she has been to a type media later. But we are part of this generation where we have we are self-talk mostly. In your case, it's much even much more than than myself because in France you have um, you have a, a tradition and you have people around who do type design. Yeah. So you can follow the path of people even you are not working with them, but you see something happening. In Lisbon, yeah. in, in Portugal at the time, nobody I, I have no. the feeling from here. Nobody no, no, no. is an in type. And in your no. case, uh, beside with the uh, funny uh, strength typeface, you have done very quickly classical typeface, uh, yeah. very traditional with certain quality that normally um, it's difficult to, to achieve when you're alone. So, or, 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 you, or, or you manage to uh, discover the software, to discover the way to follow certain, certain, you know, uh, not using calligraphy, but to have this historical reference, or, or, or you manage to do that. You were alone for six months, you say, looking at books, but or, or you succeed to learn by yourself alone. Because now, when we look to young people, most of the cases say, I want to go to type media, I want to go to type Paris, I want to go to type Cooper, because without that, I'm lost. So you were lost, but you succeed without to be lost. Yeah, I was lost, but I, I think that the visual culture helps on that. And also having good friends in the field, and I, and I guess because I was somehow of an alien. Oh, well, there's a type designer in Portugal. What is this? That's what you said, Jefferson, when you first met me. And people were kind of very kind to me because of that. So, and uh, also very early around 98, uh, I also got engaged with um, the Enschede font foundry. And for a moment I was selling their fonts in Portugal. Many people don't know, I, I didn't sell any, but I was supposed to sell their fonts in Portugal. So suddenly in 99, I had Lexicon, Trinité, Kolish, and all these fonts in my computer. And this is something that very few people had the chance. So I, I had the chance to look at these fonts very closely. And in that moment also, I, visit, uh, I visited Matthias Nordzaj, which is the owner of, of uh, um, the Enschede, and I stayed in his place, in his place for about five days. And he, he was just pulling off stuff from his father, from under those. So I got an overdose of classical typography. Then. And I was seeing stuff that I still have in my mind very, and, and, and really got into my body. So I think that the answer for your question, how did I manage to design uh, classic type typefaces in a very early stage being alone, it's also uh, doing to that because this was a very uh, special uh, connection that gave me access to things that people normally don't have. And Matthias uh, teach me quite a lot, which is something he does very naturally. We were dining and his wife is also a very good designer and type designer. So all the conversations were about classical typefaces. They, they, mostly they can't talk about anything else. So uh, it was a bit uh, doing to that, that I guess I managed that. Also, of the willing of, and of doing something that nobody else was doing. Of course, I was a bit taken as a crazy guy. What is this guy doing fonts? What is that? Typefaces? And the more people found it strange, the more happier I was becoming of doing it, of course. <laughs> That's a big so part of my nature. Yeah, so let's move to the next question. It's very close to the first one in certain way. 
uh, it's about uh, the two kind of typeface you made in the early days, two days difference. But you have two categories of typeface in your, in your library. You have this sans serif that we can see on publication, he heavy, narrow, uh, bold, uh, yeah. very straight, uh, very geometrically built or grotesque way to do it. And you have this classical typeface revival of Spanish, Portuguese yeah. story. So, you know, you have the North European style and you have the Mediterranean style. Why is that? Yeah. Uh, when I saw that question, I think, well, this is something I can't really explain. Because for me, I, type is type. And I think just over the time, I realized that there was, of course, I knew that uh, Gerhard Junger had a certain way of, of, uh, of doing uh, typefaces. You also have a certain way of doing typefaces. But then there's people like Matthew Carter. He can do anything. He can do exactly what you say. He can do an experimental typeface for color art. So he can do a revival and he can do uh, a sans serif. He can do a version of Franklin Gothic. And uh, I was more into that because as for the music, I also, I love Brazilian music. I love classical music. I love rock. I love punk. I love hip hop. Is when it's good music, I'm okay. And the same applies for typography. When it's good type, it's good. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to fit in a particular style for me. So, so and also, yeah. Uh, in the beginning, in the times you were uh, mentioning, this idea of, of having a typeface similar to your colleagues uh, for the the buyers to have an option so they can buy it to you and not buying to your colleague was not in the table we all we all wanted to, to be differentiated uh one from each other nowadays like every family has to have its own modernist his own version of the dot his own uh bodoni blah 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 but it wasn't like that before so it, it it was kind of natural to me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. to so you are you are you have uh, if there is two categories of type designer, let's say you have um, uh, Gerhard Unger uh, line or, or or maybe Lucas de Grot doing over and over the same shape on to refine on to find the most yeah. beautiful shape ever. Uh, yeah. And you have another kind with Matthew Carter um, way to have the diversity, the large okay. diversity. But um, you also look at your fonts. They are very diverse, one from the other. Thank you, thank you. Look at them again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's go no, to the true. next question. It's true. You, you made this typeface for the Le Monde, and then you, you mm -hmm. made Aniset, and then you made... It, it's different approaches. Sometimes you are more experimental, Sometimes you are more conventional. Even yeah. if you, oh, we always can see the Jean-Francois mark. I mean, but that same applies to me. You see the difference. But if you know my work, you say, oh, that's Mario. Only him can do it. I recognize my typefaces for the mistakes because people can imitate me, but they cannot copy my mistakes. So that's the way I. I like this quote. It's, they it's cannot like copy my mistakes. mistakes. Yes, yeah, that's Miles a very Dave, good one. <laughs> Miles Davis is spent a lot of time trying to find the right mistakes. And yeah, that's yeah. a bit the thing. Yeah, but sometimes people copy your mistake, and that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When they do that, <laughs> then they got catched. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> Uh, could you tell that, uh, uh, in, in my case, for Matthew Carter, because I have the same kind of analysis about Matthew Carter life, and probably many here on, on this room can say the same thing, it's to find the style of Matthew Carter is very difficult. It is. Uh, to, to find uh, his, his, his uh, way to draw the things is very difficult. Maybe in the most... Uh, Garal classical Renaissance typeface, you can feel his style, but for the rest, it's very difficult. It's almost impossible to see yeah. the trace of, of his hands on the typeface. 
Ela Bismayna, sempre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, uh, maybe, yeah, the next question is, you already answered to it, in fact. Or maybe you can say something about, you know, the fact you have a lot of various style, or maybe even more recently, you have much more diversity in your catalog. You show something very different from anything you have done recently. So you have much more diversity. You take more risks than before. Let's say in the last five years, you change, you open your mind to something who looks strange from the first C, the first thing, on, but you go into it. You take more risks than before, I have the feeling, right? Yeah, somehow that's true. Because, as you know, uh, being in this market for uh, almost 20 years, it's, it's, it's hard. And, and um, I always try to push myself further uh, and not being seen as a old school guy. I had, uh, there was, it was a French uh, friend, which is friend of some of yours, so I will not tell his name. And he was here with me for some days and he told me, you are one of these cool guys from the 90s. I hate to hear that. I don't want to see me as a guy from the 90s. I'm a guy from now. So maybe that's one of the reasons I try to, to do the things uh, different and to keep on moving because I don't want to, to be seen as someone from the past, even if many of the designs that I work have a, 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 a reference to the history because I think that's a good thing, but it's just that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I don't get as crazy any, as you on public, <laughs> at least with those fancy, fancy dresses. <laughs> Okay, so thank you, thank you. Um, um, yes, uh, sorry, but we have come back to the 90s. This is question is typical what you, uh, what you ate. No, no. What yeah. Is <laughs> yeah, what is the mindset about photography that your design generation has? Do they respect your work properly? Yeah. You are, the, you are the guy from the 90s, Mario. I'm sorry to say. Yeah, it's fine. It's, fine. it's, fine. it's, fine. it's not my uh, question. It's not mine, but it's a question from your generation, guy. If, uh, if, if my colleagues respect my work, that's what you are asking. Uh, no. Yeah. I uh, so I was referring to like the Portuguese people. Uh, I don't know if you can, can you hear me? Yes. So yeah, I, 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 yeah, I wanted to know more. Uh, this question was referring to Portuguese designers and uh, the community of uh, agencies and studios, if they respect your work and... Uh, uh, working with the Portuguese de graphic designers, it's, it's, it's a hard thing. Yeah. Uh, I, I have never built um, ex with one or two exceptions, and I'm talking of people that are my friends and my colleagues of surfing, yeah. so they probably are not good examples. So with the exception of two relatively well-known designers, it's, I have never created a, a relation with uh, agencies or big design studios and in Portugal. And But why? Because you don't want or because they don't want? Uh, I don't think it's a matter of wanting or not wanting. I think it's there's something cultural here and something that I think it's not very nice. I think yeah. there's a certain envy. envy. Uh, uh, so I think that some designers, maybe because I was a graphic designer, before i don't know why but i have this feeling that for them to call for my help it means yeah. that they will recognize me a value that they really don't want to do i think it's a bit related with that and i'm not very happy to to say it because i i would be happy if i could uh, work more uh 
it's like a bit like a, a sur surgeon working with a doctor. And I think they, they can make a good team. But I think that all these doctors, they think that they can be surgeons as well. Yeah. And, and, and they, and they don't, don't call the surgeon. They don't call the specialist. And it's a pity. It's a pity. Yeah, but, yeah I agree. I agree with you. Yeah. But other than that, regarding the other typeface designers, it's wonderful. Uh, we are even with big differences from me with Dino, for instance, but we, we all get along very well and there is no nasty things between us and it goes very smoothly with uh, Rui, uh, Rui that Francisco yeah. knows very well. I go very, I go in this place, have dinner with him, we change ideas, we, we say, bad things about the other designs on WhatsApp, as everybody does. It's, it's yeah, a lot of fun, and, and it's, it goes very smoothly. It's, it's good. Uh, and, and I feel very happy that being the first one, I, it sounds a bit pretentious, but that's a fact, that uh, all the people that came in managed to, to, to get along so well. It's quite good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thank you. Another, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Francisco, to uh, to explain more the question that you. Uh, Do you feel the same in France, uh, Jean Francois? It's totally different. Excuse me. Do you feel the same in France, or uh, is it totally different? The, the relation between uh, foundries and design studios agencies. Um, I don't know if you want to say something. <laughs> no, 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 but no, no, I will answer in a different way. Uh, you know, this, this theory of uh, you think that the, the grass is more green on, on, the other, on your neighbor's um, territory. Yeah. Yes, you always think that, okay, there is more type events in, in UK compared to France, or the schools are better in Brazil compared to uh, whatever France, or... Yeah. In Portugal, the, the, the sea is more hot when it's more cold, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you always think that in another country, it's better. Yeah. And uh, the relation between type designer and graphic designer is much more enthusiastic on both sides and things like that. But in reality, uh, we, suffer, we suffer the same problem everywhere. Yeah. We, we, we have some friends, we are probably the other side of the world, we communicate more than the, the one we the next, the next door. So there is, no, there is no typical way to be better in certain countries than on another. I think just because we are some people, we feel the same kind of way of thinking but these people are not especially local or, yes, that's the beauty of internet. That's yeah. the beauty of uh, inter international relationship with people. Um, we can share the same kind of emotion or interest in, in professional life with people who are very far, but very close in the same time. Uh, that's a big change because of, of the internet compared to the 90s where we, where, from where we came from. My own, myself. Yeah, he's younger than me, but okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, it's answer to your question, Francisco? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Mathieu have a different story about that. Because yeah. you have, yeah, maybe another way, uh, another way to have a relationship with, with other studio locally. But I think it's a generation thing. Maybe it's different. Mathieu, please, please say, say something about that. Maybe I, I think uh, I think you're right when you said the, the grass is always greener. You're always like, oh, in France, design is so bad, and you look at the UK or the US. And but I, I guess it's true of every country. You can always because you also only see the good thing from abroad. In France, locally, I see everything in the streets, and I see the bad advertising, the good advertising, the bad identities, and on the internet when I look at US stuff, I only see the good stuff because no one put the bad stuff on the internet. So I think it, you have a, a skewed perspective on your local scene yes. and about the relationship between uh, uh, design studios and type designer in, in France. I think, 
I think there is a relationship, like more and more design studios are understanding that type is an asset and something that they can use. And I think it's now, it's not as crazy as it was before for a design studio to think, oh, let's do a custom typeface for, for something. So I, maybe there is a little bit more of a dialogue than in Portugal from what you say, but there is a, a big mis misunderstanding though because graphic designer or like big corporate agency that that have the the wheel to do custom typeface they they act uh, for them it's just another thing they can build to their clients so if the thing can be done in two days it's great one day would be better and it's as a type designer <laughs> you have to spend a lot of time explaining the the process and how it it's not quite the same as the way they do design. So there's still a, this weird, there is a relationship, but it's, it's a little bit weird. That's my two things. Thank you. Yeah, I, I recall of a small, uh, small thing about uh, Germany. You know, it's exactly what you say, Mathieu. In Germany, from the internet point of view, on because of all these graphic designers say, I'm doing the thing like the Swiss or the German on the, the Baos is beautiful and <clears throat> they use beautiful typeface, no cuts, no fancy typeface, ugly, um, with outline on a lot of colors. Everything is neat and everything is it's just perfect. And when you go to Germany, you realize that it's ugly country like in every other country. It's not neat and clean like uh, Eric Spickerman say or whatever. I, I like very much Eric Spickerman. He laugh about that all the time, but when uh, when when you look um, uh, transportation in Berlin, it's super ugly. Nothing works. The 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 the, the thing system it it's full of shit. The, the the one is Paris is much better. On everyone looking, ah, Germany is beautiful. They do all the things. It's one look to our experiment Spickerman books about the good signage in in Berlin. In fact. He, he says that on the video about sign, it's ugly. Every station has their different sign. Nothing worked very well. So, okay, we are happy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You're it's work, it's full of contrast. <laughs> it's full of contrast. So, yes, Francisco, yeah, don't, don't worry. The world is horrible everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so like that, you have some new job to do. There is no problem with that. <laughs> so, um, um, so we have already, already the answer about the two other questions. Uh, maybe I, uh, we have another question about retail versus best pack fonts. Could you say okay. something about your best pack fonts on the way you work with, with, with people? In the past, or you, you managed to have a relationship with designer in UK to do a redesign of newspaper or anything like that. Maybe some other experience about that. Uh, I, I've I've done a couple of custom typefaces, but not a lot. Mostly for newspapers, but only one in Portugal. I've done one for uh, Sweden which is called Sweka, and it was quite a big project that lasts for two years. And I have designed the typeface for El Paige in Spain, and I have designed it twice. One time in 2007, and then in 2017, I have redesigned my own design again. So they paid me twice for one thing, that's good. Uh, but aside of the joke, uh, it, it was very rewarding and very demanding to, to, to work for such an important Spanish uh, newspaper. That would be a little bit like a Belgian doing a typeface for Le Monde. You know, can you imagine how the Belgian would feel? He would feel scared, you know, like the French would go, oh, the Belgian, the Belgian. So it was a bit out oh, of Portuguese, the Portuguese. But it was a Dutch designer, uh, the, the actual typeface in Le Monde was done by a Dutch designer. He's almost the same. A, no, a Belgian not, designer or a Dutch are just a rebel designer in both cases. It's not really the same, but I guess you understand what I mean. So, and also 
because until very recently that I have Tanya Raposo working with me, but she's not doing uh, um, type design work. She's helped me on everything except type design. Uh, when you have big projects of custom time, it just consumes all your energy. And then all the, the work of the foundry, marketing and all that goes down. And that happened every time I worked on a big custom project. Uh, all the foundry was left aside. I was not uh, finishing fonts. I was not uh, working on specimens. So while I like the idea of making a custom type, when it comes to the time of doing it, I don't like it. It becomes very demanding. Okay, you get more money in a row, so that's good. Uh, but uh, I, and, uh, because I, I saw your questions, I will answer to the next one. That's why you don't see in my uh, in our website, we are not really advertising custom fonts because I don't have a structure to provide uh, a good a good uh, answer to that without leaving all the other things aside. So, yes, I would like in the future to work on other uh, projects. I have uh, made one uh, project with a, a studio from Portugal. It's called R2 for an aircraft maintenance company, but it was, it, it is a small project. Two styles, very simple typeface, and this type of things, it's quite easy to do. When it comes to a typeface like I've done for LPEs that has four uh, optical sizes, eight weights, uh, italics for everything, must be tested and all that, and you're doing a typeface, for a newspaper, and you know, John Persuade, it has to work. There is no, no space for mistakes. And if you don't make it work, you're done. So it's very demanding. And that's why I, I honestly, I prefer to work on designs for retail than to, to, to work on custom fonts, to be honest. Okay. So the next question is about, um, it's about uh, village experience. So yes. decision to go with village on um, how it impacted your career and uh, are you still uh, happy with this collaboration? I uh, visited uh, the village, I have visited the village website uh, uh, today on your last typeface published with them is from last year summer. Yeah, yeah, uh, village has a very a peculiar way of doing type business, I would say. It's a very personal and small company. It's actually Chester Jennings and, and his wife. Um, well, and for me, it was a good thing because I, I joined the village in a moment where I had almost no clients in the US and it's very hard to get clients in the US and I was joining a group of quite uh, good, it was Christian Schwartz with his, before he had the commercial type, there was underwear and Chris Strawberry was coming, uh, he came just after that. So it was a good thing and it's still a good thing for me as a uh, uh, business speaking and also I have a good relation uh, with Chester on a personal level but it's, it's quite a tricky answer uh, pretty qu a tricky question because sometimes I have the feeling that it's only good for me because I have other people that are not so happy in fact the village they, 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 they take a long time before they publish a new type first because they want to design the specimen. Is the Chester's wife that make it very slowly, blah blah. So it's 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 a, it's good for me, uh, uh, commercially speaking, and I, I think that he brought me a lot of uh, visibility and I got a lot of, of good clients in the U.S. But other than and also that's the only uh, reseller that I work on. Uh, and it's fine. It's, it, it, there's work uh, 
always good for all this time. I have no no complaints about it. I, of course, I would love them to be more pushy on the market. But then when I see uh, other other distributors, they start very high, we're going to do that, but then psh, they disappear. So I, I'm, I prefer that village to keep this low profile, but it's still there. And they have a good network of clients and definitely it works. I, I think they are quite well known in the, in the field of graphic designers. Maybe mm -hmm. so, not so much recognized by the founders on that is seeing like one thing a little bit aside, aside of everything, but they, they have a good, uh, uh, market network, I guess. Did okay. I answer your question? Yeah, 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 yeah. very good. Uh, there is another one, the last one, the, not the last one, but uh, the next one, sorry. Um, yes, when there was this, this change, uh, when you realize that it was possible to, to, to live just with songs or nothing else, when I launched the, the Type Fund, right in 2001. That's why, I, 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 since there, I, I've been living just for making fonts. And I, I, I wanted to make the foundry. I had a studio, a big friend of mine, which is also a graphic designer, Pedro Falcão. You met them, I guess, Pedro that worked with me, a tall guy in Brown. Uh, we decided, okay, you keep the clients of the company, you keep doing graphic design, I will just do fonts. And I was, uh, uh, we shared an image of uh, an order by fax. People were ordering fonts by fax and we were sending CDs to them. But since the beginning, I had this Morgan typeface, it sold quite a lot. I was able to, also because I live in Portugal and now living in Portugal is a bit more expensive, but that back then was quite cheap. So, and I, I, while I have some nice old cars, I don't need uh, to, to, to drive a fancy car or have a very luxury life. So I was happy with quite a little in the beginning. And of course, with time making these custom typefaces, give me a little more and I think I, I cannot complain. I've been able to have a good living and also to help other people uh, around me just by running the foundry. Yes, and I, I feel very lucky of that. There must be a reason for that. Uh, very good. Yeah. So, um, um, so there is hope for young generation to, to do type design uh, for a living. Yes, but there's one thing, two things. Now there are a lot of people doing type and there are a lot of people doing Good time. You get the face of people when you say that. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I will not uh, tell you. And back then, there wasn't that many people designing typefaces. There were that many good typefaces. In the 90s, if you wanted a, a cell serif with small caps, old style figures to make uh, more complex uh, typographic work, that would be an handful of that. And I'm being generous. Maybe there were just two or three. Uh, and, and not to mention a system with sans and serif that, that would work well together. There weren't many. So, and also, uh, it was much easier back then when the internet started to like put your flag there. And then, then you have your flag and you stay all these years on the internet and that builds over. I feel that now it's much harder for people to, to, to be noticed. You have really to scream and sometimes do crazy things to get attention. And back then it was fewer people, it was easier in a one way. So, but I think that for people who, who is good, there's always a future. But you, you must be good and you must work hard and you, and I recommend that you be honest, and I recommend that you be ethical, uh, correct, and, um, and also, also sharing a very personal thing. Since, uh, since I've been working with Tanya, I became aware of many things about myself that I didn't know, because they just arise when you are interacting with someone. 
and one day she was telling me, and you know, I think that things work quite well for you, for me, because you decide not to focus on the bad things and on the negative side of the things. And I always, I've always done that. I, I, I don't think that I have enemies in the field of typography. I go along pretty much with everybody. I have never stepped on other colleagues' tools. I never copy anyone's work or, and that turns out to be, to make your life easier because it's a light thing and you always have, and I tend to, to be um, quite happy when I'm doing this. And in the beginning, I get a bit scared, but then as it goes on, I feel, oh, this is quite nice to have these people and it's quite nice to have this job. So I think there's a future. Well, now yeah, that's in the situation, the future is changing, but that's the nature of life. Life is always changing. Sometimes the change go faster, sometimes it slows down a little bit, but it's always changing. So about change, the next question is exactly about that. Because uh, th there is a change at uh, Feliciano Type Foundry, you change the name to uh, Feliciano Type, yeah. and you seem to publicize that people working with you yes. was not the case. You, are, you have announced that a few months ago. Uh, maybe there were some people working with you before, but from, from recently, it's more public. Yes, uh, it was a change. So it was, a big yeah, it was a change. So explain why you decided to do that. Why because the working alone, well, there's two things. I think that the world changed only regarding today. We are living a time of collaboration and interaction. And, and back in the 90s, it was more a thing of individu individuality. You also changed from Jean-François Fondry to Tipo Fondry before it was your name, and then you put a more, uh, um, not abstract, but a more not so personal name. Uh, and uh, this, this is one reason, uh, maybe two or three years ago, I began to realize that I was losing my hedge because I was uh, insisting on keep, keep on doing the things alone, which is in a way is good because you have total freedom, you don't have to share anything with nobody, but then sharing is a good thing. And also because it's crazy to try to keep the things just uh, uh, by your own, because you, if you don't have a second opinion, you take longer to take a decision. There is always, should I do this or that? And then sometimes just you have someone on your side, oh, maybe this is better, or maybe that. And that turns out the things became a little bit lighter and easier to carry on. And you are also sharing the responsibilities and, and, and also sh sharing good and bad things. And it's been very challenging because uh, we go along very well, me and Tanya, but we are completely uh, different personalities, uh, not just because I'm a man, she's a woman, but for other reasons, so it's very challenging. And I, I think it's good that we do not stick in our comfort zone and that we, 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 we always open to have new challenge and, uh, and in that. And yes, before I have worked with people that were doing for me bits of things, here and then, or for a while I worked with Ramiro Spinoza who was doing, let's say, production. But with Tanya, I really, she really got into the founder. She's not working for me full time, but she's now part of the. What, what's the whole? What, what's her role? Uh, so you are you are two people. Two, but, there's a third person which has been with me since the beginning, which is the web designer, which is also a friend uh, from music okay. and from other things. And he sometimes he, he, he do a little bits of graphic design in some things, but it mostly takes care of the, of the internet, uh, of that the technical stuff of the emails is working, on registration of domains and all this stuff. Okay. He's been with me since the beginning, but we might be 
two weeks that we don't even speak with each other. It's, it's, it works for the foundry all the time, but not in full. Yeah, I see what you mean. But what, what, is, um, what, what is the role of Tanya uh, versus you? What she, what she is in charge of? Uh, does she yeah. doing only marketing or does yes, she critique your design or how it works? Yeah. yeah, we have like two meetings a week uh, and uh, she helps me, helps me on, on uh, correcting the texts for the posts on the social media. She might give uh, suggestions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes she puts me on the ground because I tend to fly. Uh, uh, she also uh, advises me on maybe it's better to finish this design first or maybe we should work more on that uh, when she, she takes care of contacting uh, um, designers uh, looking for fonts in use she makes the posts on, font in, on fonts in use when there is a story to put there all this kind of stuff and she so helped she, me a lot. What? She's what? your new mother. That she's a mother. She, she takes a mother role at the foundry. Your explanation looks very much like that. Like a mother? When you, yeah, yeah, the mother of the foundry. She has this role. Yes. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, somehow, somehow it makes, I don't feel as much responsibility uh, since she was working with me while well, all the responsibility is on my side because I'm the one who has to pay the bills. But, but it, it's a good thing now to have yeah, yeah. somebody to... to yeah, for to, sure, for yeah. sure. So maybe she was uh, behind uh, this decision to change your licensing model or something? It's uh, no, the, no. the next question. Yeah, that's, that's your okay. Okay. The father that's decision. Okay. Yeah. No, that, was, that was an idea of mine and she was not even very uh, convinced uh, in the beginning. I will explain you that. I think that the internet as a whole thing got very confused. And in particular, the type foundries got very confused. You go into, let's say, someone that I like a lot, Peter Bilak. You go into Tipotech, and it's crazy. The amount of information that you have there, the amount of options that you have there, it's crazy. And, and my point of view is that you're creating a product with such a degree of complexity and that complexity, it's only for five, maybe 10% of the clients. And I think I'm, I, I'm being generous. Most of the people want to typeface in a easy way now to do a job and sometimes they don't even want to buy the typeface. They have to because they are working for a client that uses the phone. They are working on an agency. So my decision was, I will take away 10% uh, of the people and make a site very efficient for the other 90% in a way that they go there and they find it easy. Oh, it's web fonts and print fonts so I don't have to worry. Later they come back later. Now I have to upgrade to uh, web fonts. Do you give me a discount? Blah, 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 blah. So, and it's working. I have to say that it's working. Of course, I know that the other people will send me an email. But that was going. But in the last years, it was becoming more and more like that. When a client wants to buy a family of fonts for more than, let's say, 20, 30 users, he sends you an email. He tries to negotiate with you. He tries to, and it was becoming like that over the years. So what I think I've done was to adapt my licensing model to the reality that is already happening. Uh, that's that's yeah. the reason. And, and it took me it was very uh, mind consuming to, to make those. It, it was very scary because yes. suddenly you are giving away a lot of things that for many years were very important. Oh, this yes. table of users, all that. And one day you say, I don't want more of it. This is going to be three options, no more. And I, it was scary. I must, but uh, I made this exercise of thinking, 
how this is going to be in five years. Mm. It's going to be all this confusion to buy a typeface. People simply will not buy it. You have to make their the life easier. So it was my aim was to make the life of the font buyers easier. Very easy to understand. Do you will um, uh, at some point? Uh, yeah, uh, maybe Christine have um, a question. Do you have a question, Christine, about that? A comment? You post something on. Uh... No, I don't have a question. I just think it's uh, it makes a lot of sense, mainly because people are turned away in their buying choices because it's too complicated for them. And then also they have to go explain it. Like I have to explain it to clients as to why something costs a certain way when it's done this way versus that. And yet they're using the font for everything. So they're like, but why is it more expensive here, but not here, but we already paid for it. And it's such a complicated conversation to have with your client when you've already created a brand Yeah. They use the typeface, they love the typeface, and then they're like, but you sold this to us and now we have to pay this here and that there for this long and this is why? And it's extremely complicated. So therefore, it actually inhibits certain font choices for me to make where I look at that first and instead of just purchasing the font that I want, I will then look at the license that you know, because I know about the licensing, but they don't. So yeah. I choose fonts based on the licensing sometimes, which limits what my choices are. That's and it. then it, it, it just, it makes it for a lackluster idea of how we can then utilize fonts for larger clients and even for smaller ones. So it makes sense to limit or even to compile the uh, licensing so that it is simplified so that it is non-existent and you don't think about it. It's like, buy it or don't. If yeah. you buy it, it's yours, you use it. Thank you for using it. This is the price no matter what. Yeah. And then if it's a limited a use, then sure. If you think that they're, let's say, you know, Coca-Cola and they're going to use it globally, then put a time limit on it, yeah. you know? And I, and I think that makes sense, but to have it be so complicated as in 10,000 users, 20,000 users, Usually a client does not know, and especially in a startup economy, they never know how big or if their product is going to succeed in a certain way for a certain amount of time. So therefore it's really difficult to understand what licensing to purchase. And then once they've purchased it, it becomes a matter of fact that they don't know if they're purchasing the right license because they can't explain the future of their company. So it, it makes sense to just do it in small, medium, large, or just a flat cost altogether. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Maybe that there is an influence because of, of new way to distribute fonts like uh, Adobe Creative Cloud, where is the same way in certain way, but with a, a much more technology in a, a, a added to that. It means that the people have the fonts or they can do what they want with them but they never have the file in reality, but the font are just there and they can do what they want without asking the question, oh yeah, the cast law, I can do that, but with uh, Helvetica, I'm not able to do that because the cast law, I have a full license, but not Helvetica to, to, to take the point. So does this have an influence on your, on, on the, on your change or not at all? If if uh, have influence on what? Sorry, on, on the change of your license to have this big, uh, uh, big, uh, big, ah. big shift. Uh, of... mm, not really. I try not to think a lot about that. <laughs> uh, okay. I, while I was deciding this, I was more looking at the smaller foundries. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. All of them. Okay. Because small shop. Small, yeah. Small shop. Like you have Corte Inglés or Galerie Lafayette, and then you have a small uh, boutique. Uh, clothes, boutique. And I, I want to, to, to keep on the, that level. So uh, that small, small is beautiful. Yeah. Yes, yes. So there is a last question, but just before this last question, do you still uh, search? Yes, not okay. as much as I did before because Surf got very trendy and that bothers me a little bit. So it's full of surf schools, surf everywhere. So I, 
I'm not really into that, but I, I like the, the act of being in the water and riding the waves. So uh, I, I, I always try to find my time to go in the water when it's not cold during the winter. I'm, I'm, I'm mostly playing table tennis, which is something I've done, well, that I've done when I was a kid. And then I returned four years ago and I practice like, not now, of course, but I've been practicing like two, three times a week and then doing uh, competitions, veterans, of course, but it's something to keep me. You need to, to launch a school which is called not type Lisbon, but type on surf. Type on surf would be good. Type on surf. Yeah. <laughs> on music, on rock and roll. Yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah. Type surf on rock and roll. Yeah, type surf and rock. <laughs> So that's uh, the last question for the last question. It's tip for type designer routine working alone from home. Ooh. Well, the the best advice that I can give you is don't do it as I do. <laughs> 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 like working on ten fonts. Uh, no, no. Uh, now being more serious. Uh, maybe I describe you the way I work so you can get what you want from that. When I start working the first, I, I start to work most of the times very early. Uh, right now, because I'm, I have to do things in my house, like painting and doing something, I, I, I'm, I'm uh, staying in my girlfriend's house, so this changed a little bit. But let's assume when I'm here working and living in the same place. Many times I work at, I wake up at 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning, yeah. Because I always, I also go to sleep at 10, 10.30. So uh, I don't like to watch television. I don't have Netflix. Uh, maybe I, I'm not still sure if my television still works. I, I, I'm not the guy to stay on YouTube seeing things. I like to hear music with a good, uh, stereo so I might hear one record or two smoke a cigarette and then I go sleep. I wake up early and the first two hours there's no email of boring things. I do what I really like and I work on the typeface that pleases the most. That's my main rule. For the two hours my best energy is to spend what I like in what I like the most. And just around eight I start to wake up for the work. I start to reply some priorities emails and I start to line up the, the problems that I have in mind to, to uh, solve during that day. Maybe then I have a shot with uh, uh, Tanya and we decide things, but uh, then in the middle of the morning, I go for a walk or a ride on a bicycle and I take around one hour off. Then I come in and boring stuff before lunch. Then I have lunch. If I'm tired, I take a 20 minute nap. And then again, an hour of free ride, only good stuff, no boring stuff. And then again, I get to the boring stuff. And then I might stop a little bit in the end of the evening, like around five o'clock. Then I have dinner quite easy. And if I have energy, again, after dinner, I will work, but also on good stuff. No, no boring things. That's more or less uh, what I do. So that to say, it's good to have a routine that makes you feel comfortable and that do not turn your days in, in, in nightmares. Uh, that's good. That's good to keep some, when you work at home and buy your own, it's good to, to keep some social relation that's why I go practicing table tennis two times a week, which I didn't told, but that normally it happens in the end of the day. Sometimes, but not very often in the middle of the morning, like two hours. And this is pretty much it. I try not to work on the weekends. I manage that over the years, but sometimes I do. And I do not have work emails on my phone. When I go out of the house, the work stays in the house. I don't take, uh, I have a personal email, Jean-Francois can contact me by the phone, but orders, requests, questions, doesn't reach me by phone. It has to be on the computer. And I don't have a, a laptop 
that I work on. Uh, I, I, I can't work in a hotel or in a lobby or in a cafe. To design that device, I must be here with music surrounded by my books, my things. That's uh, how it works for me. Wow. It's very good. impressive. Very impressive. <laughs> impressive yeah. by the six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> uh, six o'clock in the middle of my night, probably. Okay. <laughs> I know, because of the emails you send me. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's okay, true. Are we done? It was really fun to be here with you. And yeah, very nice. Uh, yeah. Does someone have um, a last question to ask? A reaction? Um, you want to say something to Mario? You want to share love or hate or passion or... Um, and you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just to say thank you so much for the talk. It's good to see you all. And yeah, I mean, always good to talk together about typefaces and the way each other work. So it's good. Thank you. Thank you for you all. Thank you. Thank you.